Hey everyone, welcome back to topic one in our database class. In this video, part three, we're going to talk about list modification issues. Let's get started. The types of problems that can emerge from redundancy, so from the redundancy that happens when we store information in lists and storing information about multiple themes or business concepts in lists creates these three different types of problems. These are list modification issues or modification anomalies is another name for the same thing. So it can create problems when we want to delete existing information, when we want to update existing information, or when we want to insert or add new information. So the fact that we're trying to, the simple fact that we're trying to store reasonably complex information in a list results in redundancy and the necessity to store information about multiple things in the same list. And that leads us to the risk of having these three types of problems, deletion problems, update problems, and insertion problems. So let's take a look at a practical example. And I hope it will illustrate some of these concepts. So imagine here that we are just storing information in the form of a list. If you prefer, you can think of this as like a spreadsheet. So if it works well for you, imagine that this is just like an Excel spreadsheet. And in this scenario, I don't know, imagine that we are say a car repair company. So we're just a small, like a small little company where we have a garage and some mechanics and we sell some car related things. And if someone needs to have service on their car, an oil change, or I don't know, a new tire put on, or they want to just buy something for their car, like floor mats or an air freshener or something. This is the type of company that we are. Okay. Now imagine that we want to store information about our customers, which most companies <laughs> tend to want to do and also about the vehicles or the cars that they drive. Okay. So in this case, so we have information about customers, like their IDs. We have a unique identifier for every customer because customers might have the same name. So we need some way of uniquely identifying them. This is similar to, I don't know, like at the university, everybody has a campus wide ID and that's because we need to have some unique way of identifying everyone. And with a large university with 40,000 students, it's very likely that we'll have lots of students and faculty that have exactly the same name, <laughs> right? So we need some way of uniquely identifying them. And that's reflected here in the form of a customer ID for our little car repair company. Additional customer information that we have is we've got a customer name, okay? And then we have some car information for them, right? But we have this unique identifier for cars, like a car ID, and then the year the car was made, 2003, the make or the manufacturer, if you prefer, like Volkswagen and uh, the model. Okay. So in this case, you can see that we're storing information about both customers and cars in the same list. And uh, this is a situation that is perfectly ripe for creating some of these list related problems that I mentioned on the previous slide. Let's see how these problems might emerge. We will begin with, I don't know, let's do an insert problem. Okay. So in an insert problem, this can arise when we want to add new information to our list of data. So let's say that we have another customer, a new customer who wants to something from us, but we want to record information about this customer, let's say customer number four, and in our world, that customer will be Sheldon, but uh, let's say that our customer Sheldon does not drive a car for whatever reason, maybe it's just his preference. Maybe he's like me and he can't see well enough to drive a car. <laughs> so he wants to buy something from us, maybe like a car related gift for one of his friends, but uh, does not actually have a car of his own. So we want to record information about Sheldon in our list. And we go ahead and do, but uh, because Sheldon doesn't have a car, we can see that this leaves us with a big hole in our list, right? So lots of wasted space here. We try to insert some new information. 
And ordinarily we might say it's okay if we don't have too many customers, but if we have lots and lots of them, you can imagine that we have just big empty holes all over our list of data, right? For customers that come in that don't have vehicles, or maybe we want to store information about vehicles in our list of data, and we don't have any customers that actually own those vehicles. So we would have an opposite situation, right? The hole would be on the other side. So this can start to introduce some problems into our happy little world of storing information in a list. Right. Next, let's think of a deletion problem. So a type of problem that can occur when we store information in a list and we want to delete something. Uh, let's say, for example, that our customer, Leonard, is dissatisfied with the quality of the work that we did in trying to repair his car. So he, he tells us that he's not going to be our customer anymore. And in response, we are going to remove him from our list of customers. To remove Leonard from our list of customers, we simply delete the row of information in the list where we had stored Leonard's data. Now say he was a customer of ours. Now he's no longer a customer of ours. So we erase that row. However, in so doing, by removing all of this information about Leonard, from our list of data, we have simultaneously eliminated all knowledge. A 2010 Nissan Sentra exists as a vehicle out there in the world. And that may be information that we would have wanted to. So by deleting the row of data where Leonard was in there as our customer, we have now also lost knowledge of the fact that a 2010 Nissan Sentra exists as a car in the real world. And that may be undesirable, right? Usually we want to try to keep track of that kind of knowledge if we're a company. So because we're storing information about multiple themes here and our strategy for deleting data is to delete it one row at a time. When we delete that row of data about Leonard, we have lost additional information about that particular vehicle, right? This Nissan Sentra that we may have wanted to preserve for business purposes. Okay? So that's gone now. So that's an example of a deletion problem that can occur when we try to store information in the form of a list. And our final one is an update problem. And this occurs when we want to try to make a change to existing data. So let us once again, revisit Sheldon as our fourth customer. Let's say that Sheldon finally decides to go and get his driver's license. So Sheldon is going to get his driver's license and let's say that Sheldon purchases exactly the same vehicle that is owned by our customer Penny, which is a 2003 Volkswagen Golf. So we're just going to add this information in. Now Sheldon has a vehicle, so we want to record that information about him as our customer in case we ever need to do some repairs on it. And there we have it. So we've recorded this information. However, we now, because we are storing information in the form of a list, have redundant data. That is, we are storing information about a 2003 Volkswagen Golf multiple times on our list. And it exists here for Sheldon. And we have a duplicate of that data here for our customer, Penny. Apparently, this might not be a problem. Of course, it uses more storage space than we technically would need to if we were using a more efficient storage method. But uh, let's talk about this update problem and what can happen. But let's say that we have, I don't know, we made some sort of data entry mistake and maybe this is not actually a 2003 Volkswagen Golf. Right? So let's say that, I don't know, <laughs> instead it's a 2003 Volkswagen tennis. Okay. We want to update that to correct our data entry mistakes. We want to replace golf with a tennis as the name of the model of this vehicle. If we do that here, that's fine. And now the information for Penny is correct. However, because we have duplicate information, we are put in the awkward situation of having to look at every single item on this list and say, do I need to update this one as well? Or put differently, since we have to update all instances 
of the 2003 Volkswagen Golf to change the uh, model name to tennis, we need to say, is this a 2003 Volkswagen Golf? No. Is this a 2003 Volkswagen Golf? No. Is this a 2003 Volkswagen Golf? Yes. So then we have to make this update here as well. Okay, so we have to change this golf to tennis. Now, unless we methodically go through this entire list of every single customer and update golf to tennis for customers that happen to own this particular vehicle, that is, if we do not do that, if we make even one mistake and say we miss one, <laughs> It's because we have too many customers and we're doing this laborious manual process. Suddenly we now have bad data. Right? We have inaccurate data in, contained in our list. And when we have inaccurate data that are contaminating the information that we need to store for the purpose of running our business, it can create lots and lots of problems. So say, for example, we wanted to do some analytics and we wanted to know, just identify from a, say, a simple statistic, like how many, uh, what percentage of our customers own a Volkswagen tennis? We are now going to get an inaccurate answer to that question because we are trying to store information about multiple themes in the same list. And this requires us to change things in several locations due to the redundant data whenever a change needs to be made. Okay. And if we make any mistakes, we will have bad data in our database. Insert problems can occur, delete problems or deletion problems can occur and update problems can occur in addition to the unnecessary redundancy that we've seen illustrated here as a result of trying to store information in the form of a list. So here are some other examples of the same thing. It's always useful to see the same concepts illustrated multiple times just to reinforce your learning. So I know this is small, but hopefully you have a sufficiently large screen that you can see these things. So in this case, we have a student, say it's like a university scenario and we have students and we're advisors for students and information about departments as well that we're trying to store in this list. Okay. So here we have information about students, right? First a couple of columns, and we have some information about the advisors that are advising those students. And then we have some information about the departments for those students okay? or those advisors, whatever you wanna, doesn't matter. Well, it'll work either way. So if we consider this first example, our advisor Baker is being replaced with advisor Tang. So in this case, we are going to need to update, replace the last name of the advisor. And we will also need to make that change for relevant changes for other items in our list as well. So rather than simply changing the student's advisor and having to make that update here, we will also need to update the advisor's email and the potentially the advisor's department and the advi the administrator's last name for that department as well. So in this case, we have to make multiple updates because we simply want to change one thing that is the advisor for a particular student. That could be handled much more efficiently if we were not storing information in the form of this complex list, as we'll see. Let's take a look at a deletion problem and another example of a deletion problem. Okay, so in this case, we have a student and I know it's a little hard to see, but this student's name is Chip Marino. And let's assume that Chip is, I don't know, dissatisfied with our university and decides he wants to go somewhere else, or I don't know, maybe he wants to make some other big change in his life, I don't know, join the army or something. So he decides to leave the university. And as a result, we decide that we're going to delete information about Chip Marino from our list of students. So we go ahead and delete his row. And you can see, as was the case with our previous example, that by deleting Chip Marino, we have simultaneously lost additional information that we likely would have liked to preserve. Okay. So for example, by deleting Chip Marino's row, we have lost information about our advisor, Tran, and uh, that person's email address. And we've also lost all knowledge of the fact that uh, an information systems department exists 
and has an administrator whose last name is Rogers. So by deleting Chip Marino, we have unfortunately simultaneously lost other information that we probably would have wanted to keep. Knowledge of the fact that we employ an advisor named Tran and that our university has an information systems department. Yeah. So that's an issue. And finally, we see another example of an insertion problem. Okay. In this case, let's say that uh, we're expanding and we now add a new biology department. So we want to record information about the fact that a biology department exists at our university. And we add that to this list and that's fine. But uh, now we have these gaping holes here because we don't have any sort of student advisor information for that new department. We don't have any student information. So the result is we have a lot of wasted space here. We're not using our available space efficiently, right? It's uh, just wasteful. And when we say wasteful in the context of databases, that can mean computationally wasteful, right? We're wasting storage space. We're wasting processing power that's needed to examine these empty cells of data. Okay. So just other examples of these types of list modification issues or modification anomalies that can arise as a result of the fact that we're simply just trying to store information about multiple things all in the same place.